Hi, I'm Natasha. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back to see me. I just wanted to show you guys the seeds that I've already started for 2024. I hope it inspires you to grow some things. Maybe you'll see some new varieties. Let me know in the comments what you're starting, what you're excited about. There's lots in this video for you to choose from and mull over. So get a cup of tea, get a snack, um, and just sit back and enjoy. All right, so some of the flowers that I've started this year are nasturtiums. I got these particular varieties from Baker Creek, Rolly Bird Rose, Cherry Jewel, no, Cherry Rose Jewel, and Tip Top Rose. Um, I started these in containers. I'm going to try them for two reasons. One, they mound and they flower, 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 flower like crazy. But also, aphids in my yard can be kind of, I don't know, some years they're good, some years they're not so good. So last year, I, I was battling aphids more than I wanted to. And I know that nasturtiums can also act as a trap crop. So if the aphids eat this and leave my lettuce alone, I'll be happy. If they don't, they'll be pretty and the bees have food. Um, nasturtiums are also edible. The leaves are supposed to be peppery and the flowers are edible too. I don't know that it'll be a side dish on our plates, but it'll be fun to try with the kids. Um, I like the colors. Um, another goal of mine this year is to not have to go to my local nursery. I love my local nursery. I love supporting my local nursery, but it gets to be expensive because I like to fill my landscape with flowers. I like to have flower pots on my porch. I like them on my deck. It gets to be expensive. So I'm trying to grow some of the flowers that I buy a lot of myself. So that includes geraniums. I have two varieties of geraniums, if I'm not mistaken. I got these. These are called violet. I don't know if you can see the color. Violet geraniums. And these are just standard geraniums. Oh, here's the other one. And then this one is a bicolor pink. I think those will be pretty. I started some of those. And then this is just a border mix. I don't know what color I'm going to get. The border mix will probably just go in the back in random places. Um, these colors I can more easily coordinate for the front of my house, but we'll see where they end up. And we are also growing snapdragons. I have another one somewhere. One of my children really loves snapdragons. And so we started these for her. These are Cherry Twists from Baker Creek. And then from Select Seed, I have Trumpet Serenade Mix. I can't remember what these look like. I'll pop a picture on the screen. Then I also wanted to grow some stock. This is the Quartet Sonata Mix. I bought two packets of this because this was beautiful. Um, I will also pop a picture on the screen. Select Seeds has really good selection. They also ship really quickly. At least they did to me. It was great. I ordered them. I got my shipping notification. I had them like two maybe three or four days later, because it was like a Thursday going into the weekend. I had them by the beginning of the next week. So I really like them. This is my second time ordering from them, and I think I will continue to do so. I got some white verbena. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but the verbena, the bees love verbena. Um, so I'm going to plant some of that in my landscape. I got some Blushing Bride Phlox. Now this Phlox is not like the tall, three foot tall Phlox. This Phlox only gets, let me see. I wanna say it says one and a half um, feet and 10 inches wide. So you can put this in a container or in your landscape. It's not gonna be overpowering, but I thought the pink, the pink and the white was just beautiful. I can do a lot with that. I grew these last year for the first time. These are a super beast mix of petunia. I'm not going to try to say that word, but that's what it is. These are the prettiest, fluffiest, gigantic blooms. I mean, the blooms get to be about that big and they are ruffly and they are gorgeous. So I bought two packs of those and I started all of them. I hope I get really good germination on those. Those are the flowers that are going into my landscape. I have some more that I haven't started yet. Some of the other flowers I'm starting are sweet peas. Did I put pictures? I will go and print off the picture from the website and put it on the back. I'm such a visual person that just helps me remember what it is because 
for all I know, when I'm looking through things, these could be carrots or cucumbers. I don't always take the time to slow down and read the big giant words on the board. But um, those are the high scent sweet peas. I started some sweet peas last year and I wanted them to go up. A little trellis that I had made out of bamboo stakes. Um, and I made a reel about that on my Instagram if you want to go see it. But I put them directly into the ground. And my soil where I planted them, while it has been amended, it's still very much clay and very much rocky. And they sprouted and then they died. I don't know, a rabbit came along and ate them or what, but like they were nowhere to be found. So this year I'm just going to put them into the raised bed for the bees and for the beauty. So I'm going to start these inside and let them grow up. Those will probably get started probably over the weekend. I need to double check. Um, these are some more flowers that I plan to start. Royal Carpet Alyssum. Isn't that pretty? Look at all that pretty purple. Alyssum smells so sweet. I love the smell of Alyssum. There's White Alyssum, which is called, I think it's like, I can't remember the name of it. I think it has carpet in the name. Snow Carpet. I can't remember. There's white alyssum and then there's this alyssum. I wanted to try the purple alyssum. The white alyssum is pretty. It's just fine, but I wanted some color. Um, so I'm going to start that. And then I have some marigold, strawberry blonde. Isn't that cute? You just can't get that at Lowe's or Home Depot. I've never seen these um, in my area, so I'm going to grow them. What are these? Oh, and then I have zinnias. I bought two packs because I didn't know what I had. I bought zinnias. These are the Queen Lime series. I have Queen Lime Orange, Queen Lime Red. Oh, that's basil. We'll talk about that later. And some marigolds. I like marigolds mixed in with my vegetables. It brings in pollinators. It The scent is supposed to detract pests. I haven't had poor luck with it so I don't know I'm assuming it's working I haven't had like any infestations or anything but I love to have flowers and herbs interplanted underneath my vegetables I think it's beautiful and I think it just helps bring more of more enjoyment to my garden for me so I got these marigolds these get big and fluffy let's see what the, if the pack says how big they get it does not say how big they get I forget, but I bought all the ones that get big and fluffy because I like big fluffy flowers. And then these are white ones. Aren't they pretty? They're so gorgeous. And my um, marigolds last well into the fall, up until the first frost, um, the first hard frost. It kind of takes them out after that, but they're gorgeous and I love them. They're great. I also want to start some calendula. I like these colors. It just reminds me of strawberry lemonade. It's called cantaloupe mix. But I just think it's lovely. I'll stick them somewhere and they'll be happy. I also want to start um, some lupin. This is an annual lupin that may not bloom this year because you're supposed to start it when? You're supposed to direct sow in the late fall. Um, or early winter for blooms the following spring. So we'll see what I get. I might have to try this again last next year. But the last time I tried to grow lupin, the rabbits just, they ate it. It was like their salad bar. And they love the lupin. So I'm going to try this kind um, and see if it works out. But I just, it's gorgeous. Look at it. Why wouldn't you want to grow it? They have lots of spaces to fill up. So I like to make sure because I am big on having a tidy yard, particularly in the front. So I like to make sure that whatever I pull in terms of weeds, I replace in terms of flowers um, so that the pollinators have food and that the birds will come. And, you know, I try to compensate what I what I don't want and try to replace that. So those are some more that I'm going to start. It's not quite time for those yet. And we're going to move on. Now moving into my vegetables, cool season vegetables. These are all of my brassicas. I got some kohlrabi. Some of these, usually I grow hybrids. Most of my seeds come from in my gardener. Love Luke, love his seeds, love his prices, love his company, love his shipping, all the things. He's great. But some things just haven't done well for me. And so I wanted to try 
some hybrid varieties to see if maybe it's just not suited for my area and sometimes you just need to change the variety so that's what i decided to do i'm dropping things so this is a sweetie hybrid kohlrabi um this is gurney's blue ribbon hybrid broccoli broccoli i probably would have gotten ahead of broccoli last year i don't remember what kind i started but it was just i didn't time it right and it was taking too long so i pulled it so i could plant a tomato i just had to make a decision and it was a sad day but i was happy to plant my tomatoes because they were outgrowing the four inch pot that i had them in um cabbages ooh, that came off savoy cabbage i just think it's lovely i don't know that cabbage tastes much different from cabbage to cabbage but I'm going to try it. Look at those roughly leaves, guys. Like, I just, it looks lovely. And I love the way cabbage looks. I think it's from being a little girl and liking Cabbage Patch Kids. Honestly, why I have a little bit of an obsession with growing cabbages. Because I really don't eat a lot of cabbage. But we do eat it and enjoy it. So I'm going to grow the pretty ones. So this is a Savoy cabbage. I bought another kind of cabbage. Oh, Early Jersey. These grew well for me last year. And they're not a large cabbage. And like the name suggests, they are mature early. They take 60 to 75 days after germination to come to mature size. And they were a good size for us. But the earwigs destroyed these things. And so we didn't get to eat them. So I'm going to try those again. And I'll be more on top of managing my earwigs now that I know what was eating them. And then here are all of the greens we're going to grow. I grow champion collards, black magic kale, red shisho I've never tried before. I think it's gorgeous. I don't know. What is it supposed to taste like? Let's see. It's a Japanese heirloom. It's a spicy herb perfect for cooking Asian cuisine. I just think it's pretty. So I'm going to try it out, see if we like it. If we don't like it, it'll just be an ornamental. But that color is undeniable. It's gorgeous. Um, Red Giant Mustard. If you have not grown this, I really think you should. It is very impressive. It gets huge and the leaves are beautiful. It's a little bit spicy. It gets bitter once the, the weather warms up, so you might want to be mindful of that. But it's, it's really, really nice. I like it. We dehydrate most of our greens. This is a Tokyo Bacano mustard. Never grown it before, but it's a different color. This is another way that I sneak nutrition into our diet because we are not natural leaf eaters. I have one child who will go outside and eat leaves like a dinosaur in the land before time. But the rest of us, you know, we'll eat a salad. We eat our vegetables, but not like we should. So making green powder and throwing that in brownies helps and throwing that in spaghetti sauce helps and we get the fiber and we get the nutrients and so I try to grow dark colors for antioxidants I try to grow a variety so we're getting the the minerals that are within the herbs and everything same thing with collards I'm not making a pot of collards that's not how we eat them but I will dehydrate them um so these grow well for me the leaves get huge I really like those I usually only need one or two of these for our family premier kale is a more delicate leaf um, and it gets to be a good size. I like this one for fresh eating and it roasts, it roasts okay. I prefer to roast the Black Magic Kale, which I like better. It's a Lacinato style kale, but it's not Lacinato kale. I like this one better than the plain Lacinato kale. It's delicious. And I'm able to grow so many of these because the plants, the mustard and the kale and the collards, they get so big. We really only need two of some, three of others if I really like them. Like I'll grow more kale because we'll eat this fresh or roasted and dehydrated versus the collards, that's only gonna get dehydrated. I really only need one or two of those. Um, The mustard, I'm not gonna eat fresh. I'll taste it, but I'm not gonna eat it fresh. That's gonna get dehydrated. So the leaves are so gigantic, I really only need one. And so that's one of the things I have learned to do to maximize my spaces as you continue to garden you see how you use things and you see how big plants actually get and my spatial reasoning like i need to see it in real life i know it tells you on the package how big it gets but i need to see it in real life and see how much that yields also i like planting um kales and mustards because for me they grow all season if you can give them a space where they won't get too hot or you can protect them with some shade cloth 
they really do grow all year and depending on how hot they get they may get a little bitter you just want to find varieties that work well for you and how you want to use them and you can keep them and mine last all winter long um if they do bolt i'll just pull them and replant in the fall and then they make it all winter like i just harvested a big bowl of greens yesterday to make more greens powder for us so definitely worth the space and the time to grow greens all right let's talk onions I have some bunching onions already in a raised planter box. They have lasted all winter. I'm going to divide those and put them up. I want to say and put them in different like areas of my raised beds. I want to say the Pashenko. I can't remember what I grew. I didn't make good notes last year, guys. So I'm trying to do better about that. But this will help. But I'm going to grow some more just to compare. I like the size of the Hashenkos. One time I grew Tokyo Long Bunching Onions and the name does not lie, those things are long. And so that was a bit much. So it's not that it didn't taste good. I just thought it was a bit much for the way I like to use them. So I tried to, decided to try some Guardsman Onions. That's a bunching onion. I'm gonna try my hands at leeks. I have tried leeks. I will say I did not pay attention to how you're supposed to grow a leek. So I started these early. Um, I don't know that I started them early enough, but you know, you let me learn. And we'll see if I get leeks. I love leek and potato soup. I love it, it is delicious. And if I can grow leeks for that, I'll be happy. Um, if I can throw them in stock, I'll be happy. Some things I grow just for the novelty of saying I could grow it. And I wanted to try and leeks is just one of those vegetables kind of like the cabbage where it just makes me feel good to grow it so I'm gonna try it again so I got these from Roars they sell different um they sell seeds from different companies it's a store out of Pennsylvania if I'm not mistaken but I got these from them and here they are Roars seeds so you can see how to spell it is there a website on here they have a website Rory seeds if you google it you'll find it um i also got some hybrid onions now i have had success with my and my gardener onions but i want big giant softball sized onions and i don't know if it's the variety i chose or what i think the ones that i picked got to the size that they're supposed to be but i wanted to try something different so i tried some candy onions it says produces large bulbs averaging five inches in diameter that are globular in shape. The bulb is encased in thin paper and thin papery light brown to yellow layers with a white, firm, and juicy flesh. So these are an intermediate day onion, which you do find in my area. I can do intermediate or long day onions where I live. So I'm gonna try these and hopefully I get my big giant onions. And I also wanna grow shallots. I love shallots. But I'm always too cheap to buy them at the store, so I decided I would buy them. I would try to grow some. Um, I've tried in the past, but again, like the leeks, I didn't really pay attention to how you're supposed to grow them. I don't think I started them on time. I think it was kind of like a Hail Mary. We'll see what we get. We throw some seeds in the ground. So this year, I'm growing Zebrun, Zebrun, Zebrun I can't say it, shallots um, with intention. So we'll see what a little bit of intention and um, attention gets me hopefully i'll get some shallots because it's like garlic and onion had a baby and it's delicious love shallots next are the peppers i want to grow my family eats a lot of peppers we eat a lot of peppers i love peppers my kids love peppers my husband loves peppers we eat peppers so part of my um pepper growing experience has been that I will get peppers but they don't get as big as I want I want like the onions I want big peppers and so I decided this year it's not that they, my heirlooms did not grow well it's that I did not get what I was expecting and so in learning about hybrid seeds and what's being offered I decided that the things that I am not getting the things that aren't growing to my expectation perhaps is a variety issue so i decided to try two hybrid varieties of peppers i'm still overwintering 
my heirloom peppers because if you have not overwintered your peppers you're missing out your season starts off with peppers because as soon as those little things wake up they start to bloom and it's beautiful and so that extends your pepper growing season and also peppers take forever to grow they are the slowest things so if you can give yourself a head start on that and if you have space to overwinter one or two of your favorite varieties i would definitely recommend it and then every few years if you want to you can just grow another one and start over again but this one is a Gurney's Hybrid Giant 2. It's a sweet pepper. And this is Golden Giant 2. These might be the same pepper. I feel like I bought a giant green, a giant yellow, and a giant orange. Um, I'll try to find pictures and put them up on the screen. But again, I want to grow a lot of peppers and put them in my freezer so that I have peppers all winter because I find to get organic peppers, I have to buy them. And if I can grow more, that means I can buy less. Um, I'm growing jalapenos this year just because my husband likes jalapenos. And if I can get him bought into the garden more, then I, why not? And also, he should get something he likes. So um, we'll put this in salsa. Maybe I'll stuff some. I'm not a huge hot pepper fan, but I'm trying. Giant Marconi peppers. These look good for stuffing. I believe this is a sweet pepper. Yeah, Giant Marconi is a gorgeous Italian heirloom whose delectable flavor is sweet with a hint of smoke. That sounds yummy to me. So I'm going to try to grow some of those. I grew some last year, but where I put them, I don't think they got enough sun. So I'm going to move them so they get sun all the live long day. And hopefully that'll work better for me, but it just also may not be a good pepper for my area. I'll find out this year. And same with the Sugar Rush Peach. I wanted to make hot sauce out of this. I think this is a sweet heat that Sugar Rush Peach gives you. It says long peach colored fruits are packed with loads of super sweet tropical flavor and the seeds bring a smoky complex heat. So I like the kind of heat that hits you in the back of the throat. I don't want my mouth to be on fire. So I think this would be a good one for me to try. But they took so long to produce fruit. And by the time they produced fruit, it took the pepper so long to ripen. And then I didn't have that many because I didn't grow that many peppers because I didn't I just didn't anticipate it would be that slow. So this year I am growing more of these and I'm going to move them so that they get more direct light um, for a longer period of time. And I'll be sure to pay attention to these more. But again, something I wanted to try, they sound like they'll be delicious. Um, Corno de Toro red peppers. These are another sweet Italian pepper, but they're supposed to be good for grilling. And it's supposed to be renowned for um, being the choice for roasted peppers, which I think is delicious. It says they have thick walls and a bold, sweet flavor. And the plants are highly productive, which is all things I want. So I want to try those. That's a first time growing for me. Hungarian wax, yellow peppers. It's a typical yellow pepper. Not a typical yellow pepper. It's a typical, like a banana pepper. Um, these remind me of my grandpa, so I grow them just because they remind me of my grandpa. I don't really eat a lot of banana peppers, but these things are prolific, and they're tasty. I love them on salads. You can pickle them, um, so I like them. It's a creamy yellow translucent color, um, very similar to a banana pepper, like I said. So these are an ode to my grandpa, and this is a pumpkin spice jalapeno. It's orange. It's cute. It looks like it's petite. Why not try it? I like to try things that are fun. Everything in my garden is not strictly for us to eat. It has to be fun for me. So I thought they were cute. And who's ever seen a pumpkin colored jalapeno? Not me. So hopefully I'll get some of these this year too to go with my others. And now we're moving into tomatoes. Tomatoes this year I'm trying to do in two ways. I noticed when I was planting my garden that my garlic is taking up two beds and I gave them two of the best sunlight beds because I really, really want good garlic this year. Um, so once I pull my garlic, I'm going to plant my plum tomatoes and my paste tomatoes for making sauce. I find that 
in the summer, I just want to eat a BLT. I'm not thinking about sauce. <laughs> I'm not thinking about preserving anything. My tomatoes typically just go in the freezer until I get to them in January and February and I pull them out and that's when I make my sauce and my salsas and anything else like in bulk. So these are my heirloom tomatoes that I'm trying this year. This is a persimmon tomato. It's an indeterminate. I usually grow indeterminates. Um, it's a Russian variety. It's a rust orange beefsteak style that looks like a persimmon. It says it's a heavy producer and it's a great slicing tomato, low in acid and have a shorter shelf life. It's good for sandwiches and salads, which is all I ever want a tomato for. Ground cherries. I have never grown ground cherries, but they're supposed to be so sweet. Um, so I want to taste them. And if I like them, I will continue to grow. It says it's a combination of flavors from a tomatillo to a slight pineapple. So it's the best of both worlds. It says it's a heavy producer, which is good. Things like this I like to have in my garden. So when I go outside, I'm going to have a snack. So when my kids go outside, they can have a snack. So that looks like fun. A yellow plum tomato. Isn't that darling? Look at that yellow. This says um, it's acidic and a prolific producer. The fruit should be one to two inches. Again, I want to go outside and have a little snack. Tropical sunset tomatoes. I grew these for the first time last year. And when I tell you, these are so good. They are so good and they are beautiful. They are beautiful when they grow. These are a little bit sweet, but a little bit not. I don't know how to describe it, but these would never make it in the house. So again, just a little snack. If I get enough, I'm going to move them so they get more sun this year so I can get more. But they produced well for me. Um, it's a See, it says it's the perfect balance of sweetness and acidity. And the, the tomatoes, this picture doesn't do it justice. I found that mine have more red variegation. It is such a beautiful tomato. Old German tomato. Never grown this before. Um... It's a bi-colored tomato, and it says it produces jaw-dropping sized fruit. That sounds like fun. Um, the flavor is more tomato-y than other varieties of the same color, and this means a tiny bit more acid content, which results in a slightly stronger shelf, slightly longer shelf life, but it's still very sweet and lower in acid compared to red varieties. So it says it's good for making ketchup. Maybe I'll try to make ketchup if I'm feeling brave. Um, but I wanted to try it. I'm not going to try to say that word, but you can see it. That is what this is. This is another indeterminate. Um, indeterminate just means it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows until the frost kills it. And it continues to produce fruit. One of the best tasting yellow tomatoes in the world. Why not give it a try? It says it's a two bite variety. It's bursting with sweetness and slight acid acidity. So let's give that a go. It says easy to grow and absolutely beautiful with a slightly fuzz yellow skin. We're going to try that Arkansas Traveler. This is supposed to be a good all around tomato. So I thought I'd give that a try. Um, it's resistant to cracking, which I had an issue with with some of my tomatoes last year. Cracking usually comes from inconsistent watering. So that's probably my fault. It says it's a great producer and it's beautiful on a plate or tossed into salads. Kellogg's breakfast tomato. I love this tomato. And I didn't know that you could love a tomato. The first year I grew a lot of tomatoes, I just happened to get this one and it happened to taste delicious. I did not know, I did not grow this last year because I was trying other varieties and I didn't know you could miss a tomato, but I missed this tomato. So this is one of my tomatoes that will always be in my garden is a Kellogg's breakfast. The tomatoes get so big and they're so juicy. I love them. So, it says it's not named for the cereal, but it's a West Virginia heirloom and it was made famous by a farmer um, from who preserved the variety in Roseville, Michigan. It's a bright orange fruit burst, bursting with sweetness and can grow up to two pounds. And this is without trying. It can grow up to two pounds. I've regularly had one and a half to two pounds fruits off of this Kellogg's breakfast tomato. It is a fantastic producer a great tomato to add to a BLT. I could just eat it with a little bit of salt and pepper. It's delicious. I think you should grow it. It's great. 
This is a Marglobe tomato. Never grown Marglobe, but again, why not? Um, this is a determinant. So determinant means that it's going to get to a certain size. It's going to produce its fruit and it's going to be done. So you can get all of your um, harvest at one time. This is a smaller tomato. It says that the fruit average is about a pound in size. So these will probably just go in my freezer and I'll either make salsa with them when I get ready. Um, it says it's ideal for making paste soup or spaghetti sauce. So this is me trying to be responsible and not just growing the fun things. <laughs> so I'm going to grow these and we'll see how many I get to go in the freezer until I'm ready to process them into something else. Um, this is Mortgage Lifter. My neighbor grows Mortgage Lifter. I've seen it at the nursery. I've heard about it. It's supposed to be a giant tomato. So we're going to grow it. It says the fruits commonly weigh over two pounds. And so I've never grown a red tomato that big. It says it's rich, juicy fruit, tastes acidic with a fruity sweetness. Yum, love tomatoes. When the fruits are sliced, often each slice is as large as a salad plate in diameter. So why wouldn't you grow this? Also, why wouldn't you freeze this and turn it into salsa or something? The juicier tomatoes like this, they're not usually good for making sauce, but I find that when I freeze them and when I defrost them, it's easier to pour the water off and I can get a thicker sauce out of a tomato that's not a paste tomato. And then this is the last one. It's a Floridade tomato. Never grown this either. This is also a determinant. It's a great tomato for enjoying impasta sauces. Um, pastes or sautéing, highly productive and heat tolerant, which is what I need. Um, like many others, this Florida native was made to thrive in warm and humid climates. So I'm hoping these will probably go in my freezer. That way I can turn them into something else. So that's what I'm growing so far. And as I start more seeds, I will keep you guys updated. But I thought you'd wanted to see, maybe you'll try some of these for yourself. Um, happy growing.